So I decided to do no sugar for 30 days, and here's exactly what happened. First off, let me explain why I decided to do a 30 days with no sugar, mainly because, you know, I do have ADHD, and there is lots of research out there with doing a low sugar diet can help improve your ADHD, but definitely there's a lot of benefits, not just AD with ADHD, but also other health benefits that can help with it. And it's something I definitely recommend with a lot of my patients and clients, and something that I wanna see if it actually benefits my own health, as well as helping improving my ADHD. Now, the biggest challenge that I had to deal with when just getting started of doing no sugar for 30 days, I decided that when it came down to the rules is that I was still gonna include fruits, because I think fruits are healthy, but of course in moderations. I think one of the biggest challenges of doing a no sugar diet is when you do have family members, you know, you have a spouse and you have kids like myself, it can make it more difficult. In fact, I had an experience right when I was getting started with my daughter just like this. What do you want me to do, Ellie? I want you to eat this. But I can't. I'm 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 not eating sugar for thirty days. I know you made that for me. So you can see the definitely dilemma that I was just facing right when I was getting is that my daughter really wanted to share things that she made for me that had sugar in it, but I had to deny her, which was really hard for me to do. Uh, I love my daughter and it's really hard to deny her of things that she wants to give me. But there's other things I wanted to measure than other than how I felt, how my energy was. I also wanted to check my blood sugar levels, which I probably suspected that my blood sugar levels were definitely really way off, especially coming off the holidays with all the treats and goodies and the baked goods. So when I checked my blood sugar levels, this is what they were. Okay, all right, let's see where my blood sugar levels are at. Get some blood. Whoa, 115. So definitely really scary being 116 is definitely nowhere close where I want to be because when you hit 126 and above, that's when you're getting close to the diabetic range. And if you're consistently getting 126 or above, you can be considered diabetic. So I definitely wanna stay very clear of that. And now I know this is definitely more so than just helping with my ADC, but also getting my blood sugars under control so I don't run in anywhere clear to having diabetes. Now the first week I would say was probably the toughest for me because when you are doing something extreme where you're getting rid of all sugar, your body is gonna go through a lot of different changes. Things are gonna be changing chemically and the body's starting to detoxify. And so you could have a lot of symptoms such as this. I am dealing with a bad headache. Maybe I'm going through some withdrawals from sugar. <laughs> it's only been a week, but it's what it is. I think it has sugar, I'm starting to have some cravings. It's only been a week and oh. There's so many things that have sugar in it, it's ridiculous. On top of having the headaches that I was experiencing, definitely the cravings are really high because you're so used to, your body's so used to those cravings of having high sugar and eliminating it altogether can make it very difficult for that very first week. Now, I didn't really see any benefits, I just saw a lot of the symptoms, but me knowing this and knowing that your body makes these changes, I knew that the first week I wouldn't see much benefits, Instead, I would probably have more symptoms that were making things worse before they actually got better. Now, by the second week, I certainly started to see some changes where my brain fog was less. I also started to have more energy. I didn't have headaches anymore, which is great because I commonly get a couple headaches a week and I didn't have any headaches that week, which is awesome. So felt like I definitely was getting over the hardest part of doing no sugar for 30 days, but I still was craving more sweets. Like the cravings weren't going away just yet. I still had those cravings. And so I had to get really creative with the foods I was consuming because everything has sugar in it, which is just ridiculous of how much sugar is in our food, especially here in America. So with the help of my wife, she made a lot of healthy ADC foods that I could eat that were really good for my, my health and my ADC brain, which didn't have any sugar in it. And I certainly saw the difference by cleaning up my diet because it wasn't just about just getting rid of sugar, but also cleaning up my diet. I certainly saw those effects where I just felt healthier and I didn't feel so fatigued and just my overall being just felt great. Now, if you are struggling yourself with your own HD of what foods you should be implementing for your HD, then you should download my free guide in the description below that goes over all the foods that you should be consuming and also the foods you should be avoiding with your ADHD. By the third week, I really started noticing a lot of the benefits, especially my focus was really good. I tend to be more, more productive because I felt like the brain fog really can hinder me while I'm working. And then also I noticed that my energy was improving because I didn't feel bloated at all. 
I didn't feel all inflamed and just sluggish throughout the day. So there's definitely a lot of benefits that I was noticing when I wasn't doing any sugar within my diet. By the fourth week and beyond going up to 30 days, I certainly noticed not only was my health improving, but on top of it, my mind was really clear. On top of that, food started to be had more taste, had more flavor to it without having to put a bunch of sugar or salt and enhancers of any kind. Because this is something you notice when you do something like this, your body starts detoxifying and starts getting rid of all the toxins in your body. And you start noticing that your senses start to improve your taste, your sense of smell, your sight, all these things, because as your body is cleaning your system out and it's resensitizing all your different senses. And that's what I started to notice, especially when it came to just taste. And the big one was of course, checking my blood sugars at the end. And these were my results of checking my blood sugars. Now remember, they were 116 before, and this is what they were now. All right, let's see what my blood sugars are. Moment of truth, 106. So those definitely have improved a lot. So 106, it's better, but it's definitely not between the 90 and 99 range. So I definitely still have work to do. So this is something I definitely need to be continuously implementing. Now, am I going to continue where I have no sugar? I thought it was really hard to just do no sugar at all. But what I'm going to do is definitely cut back of my sugar intake so I can improve my blood sugar levels where I get back to that 90 to 99 range. So it's definitely something I highly recommend, especially for my patients and clients that have ADHD. If you're someone who's struggled, that has brain fog, can't focus, feel inflamed or bloated, try eliminating or at least cutting back on your sugar and doing a low sugar diet. Now, if you want to know all the benefits that you can get of doing a low sugar diet for your ADHD, then watch this video next.